Hi, my name is Tom Clendon and I am an ACCA SBR online lecturer. And I would like to talk to you today about deferred tax, specifically ISA 12 income taxes. I'd like to try and explain to you why we account for deferred tax, how we account for deferred tax, and give you some tools, give you some indicators as to how you can explain and solve deferred tax problems. So let's start at the beginning. Why do we account for deferred tax? In a word, matching. In a word, the accruals concept. Because I believe that if you report a profit this year, you should also report the tax effects of that profit this year as well, even if you haven't been currently assessed a tax bill on the profit. So, for example, it is perfectly possible to report an accounting profit of 100 million and for there to be no tax bill assessed, for there to be no current tax to pay on 100 million accounting profit, even if tax rates are 20%. There's no tax to pay. Now, there's a whole variety of reasons why that might be the case. You could have trading losses that are being brought forward. You could have accelerated capital allowances. There could be revaluation gains. Because remember, the tax man doesn't assess for tax on the accounting profit. He assesses for tax on the taxable profit. Now, once we realize that you can report a profit of 100 million, and there be no current tax to pay, I still think you need to have a charge against profit for matching purposes. All that's happened, you know, Oscar Wilde said, there are two things in life which are certain, death and taxes. So if you've reported an accounting profit of 100 million, you will eventually pay tax on that profit. All that's happened if no current tax has been assessed is you have deferred. You've delayed the payment of tax and therefore we should set up a deferred tax liability and a corresponding debit in the P&L for the expense. So you're matching the 100 profit with the tax expense of 20, the tax charge of 20 and setting up a deferred tax liability because after all, if you don't set up a deferred tax liability, arguably you're being incomplete. You're not showing a full record of all the liabilities. If you're not being incomplete, then you're not uh, being a faithful representation. Uh, it's also relevant to show deferred tax because as a liability, effectively you're predicting a future cash flow. So it's relevant and it's faithful. In other words, it's a useful thing to do. It's consistent with the way that profits are reported post-tax. So that is why we account for deferred tax. In a word, matching. In a word, the accruals concept. We seek to ensure that the profits, that the tax on the profits are reported in the same period. Now, my second point is how do we account for deferred tax? Well, there's a phrase which is in ISA 12. There's a phrase which many of us kind of end up rote learning is that the deferred tax is accounted for on all year end temporary differences between the carrying value of assets and liabilities and their corresponding tax base. And, you know, many a student writes that in the exam. But you're really only going to get the marks if you're then going to develop that and explain it and apply it. But I'll say it again. Deferred tax is accounted for on all temporary differences between the carrying value of assets and liabilities and their corresponding tax base. So that actually means we've got to understand a couple of things. Carrying value. Easy. The carrying value of an asset or liability is the figure in the books. Is the figure in the books. 
the net book value, the carrying value. So if you buy an item, a plant for 100, you depreciate it by 10. The carrying value is 90. The net book value is 90. Now, the tax base is the amount as acknowledged for taxation purposes. OK, so take that asset that we bought for uh, 100 on which we've charged depreciation of 10. The taxman doesn't acknowledge depreciation. The taxman disallows that and gives instead capital allowances. So the tax written down value of that asset might be 100. The original cost is 100, less the capital allowances of, say, 25. And therefore, the tax written down value is 75. So you've then got a difference, a temporary difference between the carrying value of the asset of 90 and the tax base of 75. Now, the temporary difference, therefore, is 15. 90 and 75 is 15. And then if you've got a tax rate of 20 percent, then you've got a deferred tax story of 20 percent of 15. The numbers are never difficult. 20 percent of 15 is three. You know, in SBR, if you're going to have a deferred tax question, the calculation of deferred tax is probably only worth one mark. You know, 20 percent of 15 is three. It, it is not going to be a sophisticated, difficult calculation. The carrying value is the figure in the accounts and the tax base is the other figure he gives you. It's 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 never going to be a. Too challenging a thing to get to grips with. But I think one of the things we have to be aware of is the idea that the deferred tax issue of three could be a deferred tax liability or could be a deferred tax asset. Now, when you've got the carrying value of the asset exceeding the tax base of the asset, you're, you, you've effectively got a gain. You're effectively deferred the payment of tax you've effectively got a deferred tax liability. And let me explain that with revaluations. Because if you have a revaluation, the revaluation surplus causes the carrying value of the asset to go up. So you've got a revaluation gain increasing the carrying value of the asset. But the tax base ignores the gain because there is no current tax assessed on a revaluation gain. So the carrying value of the asset becomes bigger than the tax base. So what you've got there is an accounting gain and you've got a taxable temporary difference. And so you've got a deferred tax liability. And that's the same principle as when you've got accelerated capital allowances, the tax relief you've got early, you're, you, you're better off. You, the carrying value of the asset is higher than the tax base. So you've got a deferred tax liability. So I'm going to say that again. When you've got an accounting gain that's not been subject to current tax, the revaluation gain, when you've got an accounting gain, that creates a taxable temporary difference. The carrying value of your asset is bigger than the tax base. An accounting gain is a taxable temporary difference and therefore leads to deferred tax liability. So you're deferring the payment of tax, set up a liability, charge an expense. On the other hand, there's a bit of yin and yang going on. Because if you've got an impairment loss, the asset is written down. If you've got an impairment loss, the carrying value of the asset becomes smaller. But the tax base is the same. You don't get tax relief from a, a non-cash item like a revaluation gain, a, like, like an impairment loss. You don't get tax relief on that. So that's disallowed. So the impairment loss reduces the asset. Tax base remains the same. And therefore, with an accounting loss, you've got a deductible temporary difference. And if you've got a deductible temporary difference, you're creating a deferred tax asset. So you're debiting the asset, creating the asset, and the credit is the tax credit in the P&L, mitigating the loss, reducing the amount of the impairment loss. So if your impairment loss was 20, you know, you might have effectively 
a tax credit of six in the P&L to kind of match that, to offset that. Have I explained everything about deferred tax? No, but I've tried to establish the basic principles. Do you need to read more about this? Yes. Uh, there's a good article that I wrote with Sally Baker that's on the ACCA website about ISA 12 deferred tax. Yeah, you need to practice questions. You need to understand a bit more about losses and and, and how, how liabilities work out. But what I hope I've done is I've whetted your appetite. What I hope I've done is I've revised your basic principles of deferred tax. Why do we account for it? Matching. How do we account for it? On temporary differences. And if you've got an accounting gain, that is a taxable temporary difference, which creates a deferred tax liability. If you've got an accounting loss, then that is creating a deductible temporary difference. Yeah, and you've got a deferred tax asset. I hope that's been useful. Thank you very much for listening. Until next time.